Rachel Elm, Sister Kate here again, out cutting the uh, weeds down with the hook. These are those bad weeds that need to go that throw down a lot of seeds and have taken over our property. Let me just pull that guy up right there. Uh, anyway, I wanted to get back with you guys about Harriet Tubman. Um, my original video on Harriet was going to be more like Harriet Tubman's spy master, which she kind of was, but I found out um, she wasn't exactly, you know, the head of the intelligence agency for the Union, but she was certainly an arm of it. And so she was born in 1822 into slavery in Maryland, um, which if you know anything about the the North and the South and the Civil War. Uh, Maryland, I thought, was considered in the Union, but I guess it wasn't, or if it was, it had slavery for a time. Uh, and she was beaten and whipped. Uh, she had a head injury when an uh, overseer, oof, look at me, I'm so sweaty, threw something at another slave and it hit her and it left her with permanent uh, after effects, including uh, strange visions and dreams, which may have actually helped her to conceptualize, you know, what her future life is going to look like. So when she was, um, I think about 27 years old in 1849, so this would have been five years, six years, 49, 65, 15 years before the Civil War broke out, um, she escaped. She escaped from whatever plantation she was on in Maryland and she went to Philadelphia, which would have been in Pennsylvania, which is right there. It might even be right next door, but apparently Philadelphia was part of the North and she was free when she got there. Um, and she became a cook and a nurse for the Union Army when the war broke out. So apparently for, you know, five or six years when she was in Philadelphia, she figured out something to do until the war came along, and then she joined up. And she went from being a cook and a nurse to a scout, an armed scout, and a spy for the Union Army. And while she was living in the North, she hooked up with the Underground Railroad. Now, I thought she set the Underground Railroad up, but I guess that's not true. I think it was actually Quakers and different church groups and abolitionists and so on set it up. But she managed to go on 13 missions for them, so maybe it was in that six-year period before the war, and she rescued 70 people, including family members and neighbors and so on. So she was, I would guess, taking them from that area in Maryland and moving them up the line. Um, and then in 1850, when the escaped uh, slave law was made that anywhere they were captured, they had to be returned, she started taking them all the way up to Canada. So she she was a smart, uh, competent lady there. Um, she actually went on a military operation while she was with the Union Army. They had um, recruited a Colonel James Montgomery who had been fighting uh, for the um, Kansans in the, the border war. There's a big guerrilla war on the, on the Missouri-Kansas border. John Brown came from there. Uh, the burning of Lawrence, etc., happened as part of that. And he was um, experienced in that kind of cut and slash burn guerrilla warfare. And so the Union used him. They injected him down into South Carolina with some units of the 2nd Carolina Infantry. And she went with them. Now, her, ostensibly, her, her reason for going was they um, had captured St. Helen Island and they were going to um, set up a hospital. She went down there as a nurse uh, and also as like a, uh, when they repatriated people, they brought them there. It was, a, it was a union property in the middle of the South. And they launched military ops from there, too. Um, so she went down there with them and... She was used also for intelligence gathering, and they found a, an area on a river down there. It's called the, ooh, I can't remember now, Colombi, hang on, Combahee River. Several plantations, very large, 
and through her intelligence, intelligence gathering, they decided they were going to hit that area and um, free the slaves and destroy the properties because there was a lot of uh, agriculture going on down in there. Um, and they, the, um, the Union Army split up. They had three small boats and had three units and they attacked different portions on this river, including a ferry and these plantations. And Harriet Tubman went with them. And um, when the slaves on these plantations realized they were going to be freed, they all swamped the boats. And so um, through progressive trips, they went and dropped them on a safe shore and came back and got more and more and more and it ended up freeing about 750 slaves. And Harriet Tubman was there to help them, to explain to them what was going on and to guide them uh, back to the island. And so she was involved in the military op. Now, online it says she led it. She didn't actually lead the raid. It was a military raid under a colonel with captains who did the military action. But she was definitely there involved. And um, it was a major, uh, major victory for the Union, even though it was a small uh, raid. They did manage to burn, I think, 10 different plantations. Um, captured 10,000 pounds of rice, you know, burned down shops and mills and all kinds of things. And the people that they did that to never recovered. Like, they never rebuilt after that happened. Um, and one reason that they were able to do this without a whole lot of Confederate troops defending was a lot of the Confederate troops had been withdrawn from that area. It was a low area. It was a swampy area around that river um, because of malaria, typhoid, and smallpox would break out in the summer when these swamps would get all humid and everything. And so they were kind of out of the way. And when the Union guys attacked, there wasn't much defense thrown up. And the slaves first went to the First Baptist Church in the area, and like I said, then they went on to St. Helen Island. So she was a war hero, and her network of, of people that she contacted on the Underground Railroad and also through her abolitionist um, uh, leanings and her political leanings led her to help the Union Army in doing things like the Combahee Raid. Um, and then after the war, she became a women's abolitionist, um, and she did that until she died. She was born in 1822, and she died in the early 1900s, so she spent a large part of her life being active. And out of her example, in the 1970s, the Combahee River Collective, which was a black feminist group, was formed in 1970, and they used that river action as their, you know, the, the title of their group. So she, you know, she's inspired a lot of people and she was smart and she, she was active. She knew how to make connections, um, convince people to go places. And then once they were in her care, uh, she was very responsible for them. She did not lose one person that she escorted through the railroad. She was careful. She was, um, creative and she was smart. So there you are, Harriet Tubman. Fascinating. All right, y'all. Got to get back to work. Bless you. Shalom.